What's going on guys? It's Gendo here and welcome to episode 29 of the world's first and today we're going to be taking on Cheltenham at home in the league but before we get to that we have several transfers in that we need to go over as well as the matches that we have played over the last month. As you can see we have made quite a bit of transfers in because we didn't have that depth we had at the very beginning of the season. Nobody left but let's go over all the people that are coming in before going into the matches. And first up is our first loney in of three. It is Tom Marsden, a 17-year-old coming in from Grimsby. He's a center attacking mid and is pretty much going to force Alec out of that starting role. Him and the next person that I'll show are a little better than Alec, and I want to try and integrate them into the side. Good speed, good technical, great vision for a 17-year-old. He is most likely going to be my starting, if not my backup. It's pretty much going to push Alec down the list. But the Arsenal attacking mid that's coming in is Callum Armstrong. The 18-year-old is coming in from Colville, and he's got the best speed and best vision out of the three of them. Not so good in the technical attributes, but he's got a 13 first touch. He's got some decent mental attributes as well, and maybe in the rotation as either a first or second center attacking mid for the squad. The second loney we have coming in is Greg McNabb, coming in from Sheffield Wednesday. The 18-year-old, very good in the defensive abilities and his defensive attributes. Nine marking, 12 tackling, 14 positioning. His speed isn't his best attribute, so I want to try and use him as more of a limited center back, if not a defensive mid in my system. But overall, not very bad for his age. Helping fill the midfield role is Charlie Gorman. The 25-year-old is brought in on a free, and honestly, he looks very good. He looks more like a defensive mid, so I want to try and play him back as like a, a ball-winning midfielder. And his speed is okay. His defensive attributes, a little better. 12 marking, 8 tackling, 12 positioning, also 12 passing, so he can try and get the ball from the back to the front, distribute it to our forwards, and try to make something happen. Make a play happen, get us more goals. So Charlie Gorman looking really good for this level, and hopefully he can integrate well into my squad. And then lastly, I need a depth on the right side, as Kieran Coupe has been really wanting a move away from the squad. And Louis Fazekerly has a really weak speed. He's 35 years old. He's just losing speed every day. So I wanted to bring in a right back. And here is Levi Walker. He looks fairly good for a 23-year-old, and his speed is what turned me on to him. 10 pace, 10 acceleration, obviously faster than Louis. Uh, his defensive attributes look okay as well, with a 7 marking and a 12 tackling. I like his crossing. If, his, if your crossing is near double digits I will pick you up especially for my system that likes to push the wing backs up and then cross the ball into the forwards so I look to use him as more of a backup option to Kieran and Louis maybe try to phase Louis out since he is getting older push Louis and actually push Levi to try and give him the starting role but only time will tell he's on a non-contract so someone else could pick him up hopefully he will stick with us and hopefully he will integrate well into the squad as well as the other players as well now that I introduce the players to you, let's take a look at the matches. And since our last live com, that drubbing at the hands of Tamworth, we had a very up and down month. Two wins, two losses, three draws. Can't really find our footing as of yet. We're still trying to integrate the new players and we're still trying to find our form. And it's just been very roller coastery, as you can tell. We beat Filed away from home in the very next match by the score of 3 to 2. Uh, Kieran Tarby, Elliot Pond, and Benny Igihan, the goal scorers for us. We pretty much had it settled once Benny Igihan scored his goal. And, but following that, Staley Bridge, a very disappointing loss to Staley Bridge at home. As we started off well, Benny Igihan getting the goal in the first minute of second half, but then the defense just crumbled, allowing Staley Bridge to score two goals near the end. We then followed that up with three straight high-scoring losses, a 3-3 to Chorley, and then 2-2s against Nuneaton and Hyde United, before following that up with a nice solid 2-0 victory against uh, Ilkeston, who were in the promotion playoff spots at the time. But then we bottled it in the very next match against Geisley, as the defense just completely fell flat after the hour mark and allowed the three goals to go past. We were looking really solid. We looked really well. We held the ball very well. I think we had like 60 to 55 to 60 percent possession actually 55 right there but we were not able to take our chances with the 11 shots and the four on targets we just let Gilesley walk all over us so after that mediocre run of form we find ourselves in 17th place we pushed up a little higher but obviously not as high as I would have liked nine points through eight matches the majority of the teams are sitting bunched up uh, we're like what three points off of seventh place if we start stacking wins we can see ourselves jump up the table we could possibly be in the promotion playoff spots like five matches from now but as it stands Loughborough United are pretty much the favorites to win this league as they have only lost one match in eight 
and are sitting up very comfortably at the top of the table. So it looks like our opponents in Cheltenham today are sitting in last place, which is really strange. They are a newly relegated side, and I thought they still had the talent on their squad that they can push back up into the promotion playoffs, if not gain automatic promotion at first asking. Um, to see them down there in last place after eight matches is really concerning, but at the same time, it doesn't concern us. It should be an easy win, but at the same time, there are no easy wins anymore in this league. Uh, we're, our team is still trying to meld together, still trying to learn the tactics, so anything can happen. Cross fingers, hopefully we get a win today, but let's look at the squad. So we're sticking with our 442 narrow diamond. It's been okay for us so far, but obviously we can do a lot better with it. And this is the starting 11 for today. We got Williams in that, Coupe, Kennedy, McJanet, and Duxbury along the back line. Norris, Gorman, Gascoigne, and Armstrong will be the four mids. And then sitting up front, Elliot Pond and Benny Iggyhan are two top goal scorers as they have had five goals in eight matches. Like I said, cross fingers. Hopefully we get the three points today against the side that is looking worse for wear. But there's only one way to find out. We got to kick off and see what happens. Early on, we have some decent passing movement. Gorman out to Coupe. He can put in a decent cross. Finds Elliot Pond. Actually falls to Gorman. We can take in our shot. Oh, try to find Benny Iggyhan, but it gets cleared away at the end. It's a corner coming in. Lewis Kennedy tries to whip it into the box, but it is cleared away by Cheltenham. We do get the ball back and keep it in their area. Callum Armstrong taking it out wide. It falls to Duxbury. Duxbury's a good cross for the ball. He just needs to get around two defenders. It's cleared back out to him. We're still keeping up the pressure, but we just can't find a decent pass in. Oh, Cal Armstrong with a shot. He's just smacking it into defenders. I don't know what's going on there. Throw in from Coupe, 23 minutes on. He puts in a decent cross. Benny, how do you miss it from there, Benny? That should have been 1-0 to us. It's another corner coming in. We've been getting all these corners, but we have not been able to do anything with it. Benny, if he just would have turned and shot, he probably would have had a goal, but instead Cal Armstrong just misses wide. Cheltenham now with their first real attacking chance, just a minute from time. They get it out wide, they slip it in. It's a good save from Callum Williams. I thought for sure that would have been a goal, but it's a great save from the keeper to prevent it, and it keeps it nil-nil. One minute of stoppage time on the clock as we're pushing forward. Duxbury puts it across. Benny! Benny Iggyhan. I was about to sub him off at halftime because he wasn't doing much, really. But with a great cross in from Scott Duxbury, he calmly slots it in near post and puts us up 1-0. I don't know if that performance, I don't know if that goal actually, you know, changed my mind, but at the same time, I'm going to keep him on for at least another 10 minutes, another 15 minutes to see how he does. And as we come to halftime, it's 1-0. I'm just going to tell them, just keep going out there. There's definitely room for improvement. They could do a lot better. We should have more than one goal at this point in time. So I'm just going to let them go out there and uh, just continue on with how they're playing. There's got to be another goal coming somewhere. Pondy slips through to Armstrong, slips through to Benny. Probably could have made a two right there and would have proved me wrong. Even though Benny currently is sitting on 67% uh, conditioning, I'm going to be subbing him out very, very soon. 20 minutes to go, and we get a throw in. Duxbury to Norris, content with playing through the middle, slips it through to Elliot Pond. Elliot Pond now out to Benny. Benny back out to Norris. I did not sub off Benny. Just because he's hit, is that difference maker we've had so far, I might as well keep him on just in case he gets himself a second goal. And everyone content with playing around the midfield. No one really wants to keep possession. Marsden, Tom Marsden, up to Benny, out to Duxbury. He has a couple men in the box, but that was a really bad cross. I don't even think it was a cross. That's a cross. Elliot Pond over the crossbar. Seven minutes left to go. Coupe. Oh, Coupe, no. Why? We give up a foul in the box. It's a penalty to Cheltenham. And now Williams getting a hand on it. Ball goes in the back of the nets. Cheltenham equalized with seven minutes to go. This is damn disappointing. Still three minutes to go. Oh, Cheltenham, please. Thank you, Gascoigne. Out to Duxbury. We have possession of the ball, but we need to do something with it now. If we want to get a late equalizer, Duxbury coming up the wing. There's only one of us in the box. Elliot, turn and shoot. Oh, if he only would have shot that first time instead of trap it down, we probably could have had something there. Out to Coupe. You can get a couple men in the box. Anthony Steer! He gets it! His first goal of the season, the young 18-year-old, putting us up now 2-1. Now we just need to hold on to this lead with just two minutes and whatever stoppage time left. That was a great cross in. Duxbury couldn't get it on the left. Coupe got it on the right. And Steer calmly first times it into the back of the nets. 
keeping around the edge of the area. There are two minutes of stoppage time being shown on the clock, though we have not hit the 90 yet. Good save from Williams. Flip it out wide. They get it through to Cauley, but that's wide, and we should be time-wasting here with 10 seconds left. We should come away with a nice victory, albeit a very nervy victory, versus last place Cheltenham. I did not think that they would uh, come back and get that penalty. Coupe, Coupe on one end gives up the foul, gives up the penalty, allows Cheltenham back into the match, and then on the other end helps out in being a match hero by crossing it in and getting the goal to Anthony Steer. So at the very end of the day, we come away with a victory. I'm not very happy with the performance. We could have done a lot better versus this side. That being said, let's take a look at when we will come back next on the schedule. So taking a look at the next month's worth of matches, we have matches from all over the place, up and down the table. We also have the second qualifying round of the FA Cup stuck in there as well. But I think we'll come back against Hensford as they are a true challenge. They're sitting in fifth place right now. Like I thought that Cheltenham were going to be a true challenge, maybe Hensford will put up a little better of a fight. And I think that would be a, a nice test for our team. We will have gelled by that time. I believe we will have, you know, some semblance of knowledge of the tactic. And I think this will be a great challenge for us. So when we come back next episode, Hedensford. But until that time, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. If you like what you saw, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new and you want to see any more FM content on the channel. Any comments, suggestions, questions, anything else at all, please leave them in the comment box below. But as always, this is Gendo, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and peace out.